is supernatural increase. Not just increase, but supernatural increase. Amen? Amen. That in these closing you know, years of time, closing years of history, that something special would take place, that we would be seen as the children of God, right? Amen. Seen as the light of the world. You know, when Jesus was on earth, he said, I am the light of the world. And then before he left, he said, you are the light of the world, right? Amen. And in these last days, that something supernatural would take place. And I want to be open for that. Are you with me? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. I was raised a Roman Catholic. And one of the first things that they teach you to do is to bless yourself. A bit like David did. Well, in a slightly different way. When I was a kid, they used to teach us, In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We won't get into that, right? And all the theology behind it. But the principle is good. The principle of learning to look after myself. David blessed himself, correct? David brought himself from glory to glory, from strength to strength. And this Easter camp is about you. It's about you moving to a different place. Now give me your full attention a moment. As I look back over my life, okay? I, I, I go to church, I pray, and you know what? I see a pretty standard reaction to my prayers. I pray for a while, and I see a reaction. I pay my tithe, and I get my return pretty normal to be honest with you pretty average for a Christian pretty natural I'm not despising it I'm not disparaging it the Bible says if you sow you will yes yeah, natural not supernatural it's natural and I believe that God wants to do something supernatural and I've, I mean I'm just being really honest I'm embarrassed even to say it I've been a pastor a long time, but I'm embarrassed. It shouldn't be true. And I ask your forgiveness, Lord. And I open myself for it to change. But the truth is, my returns, my interaction with God has been pretty normal for the average Christian. The, uh, you, you know, you give and you receive, but it's normal. And there, there, there's been, there, yes, there has been supernatural interventions in my life, but they've been nowhere near what they could have been or should have been. Hello. And I'm sure you will agree with me. When, when I think of my neighbors on my street, I'm not that more remarkable than the next guy. And you come to church, and, and I'm not, please don't get me wrong tonight. I, I'm not disparaging these things, but someone will come forward and, and they will give a testimony that some great miracle took place because they got a mortgage. Yeah. Everybody on your street has got a mortgage. Right. Hello. Are you with me? And when Jesus, when Jesus went in and he worked miracles, they weren't normal. Weren't they? They, they, they were amazing. The dead were raised. The blind can see. And how much have we weakened this? How much have we weakened it? Amen? Correct? We have weakened this. And so our testimonies, and I'm not being critical, because I, I praise the Lord for natural returns. I do. I praise the Lord for the natural things that have happened to me through the normal Christian life. Anybody want to be normal? <laughs> Right? I want to be supernatural because I'm born again. Now, there's all sorts of ways that people prosper. The Bible says, do not fret when the wicked prosper, right? And some of your neighbors, they're not even saved and they're more wealthy than you. Some of them may even be happier than you. Oops. <laughs> right? So people... You, you receive in life, be it in your family or your relationships or your finances, in any department. You receive either through normal skills or talents. You have provided for yourself. I was telling the London guys, I got in a car in uh, Missouri in Springfield in AOG, their headquarters. And this student in the college took me in his car. It's the worst car I've ever been in in my life. It was stinking. It was literally falling apart. And I sat down and I thought, oh Lord. You know, I said, actually I'll walk. I'm fine. You know? 
And all this guy said, and he turned to me and he said, the Lord has blessed me with this car. <laughs> and I felt, how dare you speak about the Lord like that? Okay? I know who got this car. You got this car. Right? If God is going to do something, don't you think he can do a little bit better? Right? There's nothing supernatural about your car, except that we're all still alive. Right? So as I look at myself, something changed about a year ago, so maybe a little bit more, a year and a half ago inside of me. And I think some of the experiences I've had in my life, God has, listen to me. Some of the experiences in my life, God has brought me through experiences so that I can help others. Amen. Amen. And so this is another one. It's another experience. Supernatural one. Supernatural increase. Supernatural intervention of God. And just this morning, I was seeing some of your faces as we were praying. Seeing some of you in prayer. And seeing what God wants to do in your life. I saw Joshua. Can you imagine the determination within Joshua and the faith within Joshua that he realized that not just victory, because he already had natural victory. He'd already won the war, right? But he believed in something. He believed in something more. The battle that he had, he had already won would go down in the pages of your Bible like a million other battles. But Joshua believed for something different, something greater. So he lifted up his eyes to the sky and he said, Lord, make the sun stand still. Amazing. Right? Great supernatural faith. And I pray again in these last days that you would bless the Lord and thank God for the natural returns that we receive. Amen. Everybody say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Say, thank you, Lord. But we believe that something much greater than that can happen. You should have to get up and think, I don't deserve this. this, this. Why, Lord? Why? Why are you so good? This is beyond my dreams, Lord. Isn't that the God of the Bible? Isn't it? It seems to me that God almost cannot help himself but be incredibly generous and super abundant in everything he does. I guess when you're that big, you kind of, it's going to happen, isn't it? The apostle Peter was a fisherman and all his life he goes out and he throws the net and the net comes in with a fish. Then he goes out and he throws the net and the net comes in with a fish. Been there? Every day is the same. The net, the fish, the natural laws, they just work. And then one day, Jesus comes along. Not just is his boat full and about to sink. He has to get another boat, then that boat is full and about to sink. Just a little bit of intervention from Jesus Christ. And how many times the apostles, which is not recorded, would have fed the crowds. They would have got baskets. They would have got bread as they traveled. But you know the occasion twice where there were problems. The crowds were so big and the food was so little. What did Jesus do? As soon as Jesus touches the situation, there's not just a natural return. There's not just enough for the crowd, but there is more than enough. He can't help himself, right? It's almost in his nature. When he went to a city, it said all were healed with the widow's oil. Remember, I mean, what a miracle. He didn't just do a little thing, but that lady had enough money to live on for the rest of her life. One encounter with the Lord. One encounter. Are you getting the message? As I look at my, at, at my life, the truth about me and maybe the truth about you is the returns and the appearances of God, the, the evidence of God in my life is proportional to me. The things that I've done, they line up. God is not a liar. He's not going to be mocked. The things that I've done are pretty much proportional to me. But once in a while, something just outrageous happens. And he himself steps in. And then it's not proportional. It's completely disproportional. 
like the widow. Right? So and she was not expecting to be debt free for the rest of her life, was she? She was not seeing that one coming. That was enormous, more than she expected. Completely disproportional when God does it. But it's in measure when I do it. And when I look at my life, I say, God, it is me. And I want it to be you. I'll do my part, but I want it to be you. Another thing when God, when, when God does something, when I do it, it can be quite logical with the interaction of God in my life. But when God does it, it can be something completely illogical. It can be amazing, crazy, you know, especially in the eyes of the world. I had a friend, just to give you an idea about how God can change people's circumstances. I had a friend, he, he was a very bright guy, but he worked washing dishes. He was just a drifter. And he was washing, I believe it was actually Oxford. He, he was a dishwasher in a restaurant. And there was another drifter in the restaurant, also washing dishes. And they used to talk. And this one day, the drifter, there was nobody serving the tables breakfast. And this drifter went out and served this woman her breakfast. And he started, he just looked up and said, you know, good morning, good morning. And she had an American accent. So he turned and said, well, you're from the States, are you? Yes. And they just start talking. And they like each other. You know how it is. So they pass the numbers. And then they get together. And he married her. And she lives in Jack Nicholson, the actor's old house in Hollywood. So he's gone. It's just a little bit of supernatural illustration. You know, relax. So he's washing dishes one day. And the next day, that's a bit of a jump, don't you think? Never mind, don't fret when the wicked prosper, right? A friend of ours, Andrew McCourt, I, we know Andrew very well. Andrew's a normal guy, right? Just a normal pastor. But suddenly, I don't know what happened. I've, I've watched him and how he's moved from strength to strength. And he's gone from your Joe Bloggs average church to like a mega church pastor in the state. S suddenly, something unusual has happened. Okay, let me ask you this question then. When was the last time something happened to you that you couldn't explain? When was the last time that something happened to you that you, no one could explain? That's the problem, isn't it? And I pray this Easter that that changes. Amen? Amen? On your page, on your notes, just a few things tonight to lay the foundation for this weekend. The first thing I want to say is supernatural increase is a season. It's a time. And it's a season that you can enter into. I love this scripture. He made them ride on the heights of the earth that they may eat the produce of the fields. He made them draw honey from the rock and oil from the flinty rock. Eyes forward, please. Do you know what this speaks of? Flinty rock. Success with flinty rock. Hard rock. Hard times. Is the UK going through hard times? Brexit. I'm sorry, I had to say it. Brexit. Turn it, everybody, they don't know what to do, don't know what the future holds. Hard times. And your God has got a long history of blessing the church in hard times. A long history. It's almost like at these moments, this is his moment to arise. This is his moment to show the difference between the world and the church. Right? And we need to be ready for that, open for that. Flinty Rock, relationships. I worked with singles for a year, single Christians. You know what the women always say? There's no men. There's no men. There aren't any men. There's loads of men. Believe me. And God can give you success in hard times. Same for the girls. God can give you success in hard times. During Flinty Rocks. So I don't care if it's your career, if it's the economy, if it's relationships. In hard times you can succeed. In Jesus name. Amen. Believe it. Claim that promise from Deuteronomy. Let me say about the season. The season applies to me. Uh, Pastor Gabriel Han in Singapore gave us a wonderful message a few years ago on the 40th anniversary. I thought it was fantastic. It, it really you know, set me... It moving for months and months afterwards. <clears throat> what he simply said was, the 40th anniversary was something for everybody. 
And I'd never considered that in my life. And he began to explain how when the fire fell in the upper room, who received? Say everybody. 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 That means you as well. When Jesus went to a town and healed? Everybody. 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 And as Danny, Gabriel, he changed his name. As Gabriel was talking, I suddenly realized, do you know what? Something inside me doesn't include me. There's something inside me that says, but not me. And he really did a good job that day because I, that changed in me. Something changed in my, in, in my uh, self-worth, self-perception, call it what you will. But I left that meeting thinking, do you know what? Why not me? Yes, I've got a problem here. I, this has been a blockage to me. And I, I, I changed and I'm still in the same mindset. God's going to bless me. God's going to bless me. God wants to bless me. Right? My, my, my wife was an naughty girl a few days ago. Hallelujah. She did, she did a very minor thing wrong, you know. I said, please. Say, and she said, okay, okay, no problem. Sorry about that. And then later the same day, I just saw her, you know, and she, she was sad and feeling very guilty. You know? Everybody say, ah. Oh. Oh. You didn't mean that. So... I looked at her and I said, you know what, get over it, forget it, forget it. And she looked at my face and she started to cry. Yeah, yeah, I don't look that bad, do I? <laughs> she looked at me, she's, she's, I'm going to start crying in a minute, sorry. She looked at my face, she started to cry. And she said, you, you don't, you, you, you forgive me. I can see you, you forgive me. I said, yeah. Oh, you, oh, you're talking about the, oh, I've forgotten about that altogether. You're still, you're still carrying you still carrying that? I said, you know what, girl? Life's too short for that. Come on. Some of you come here with stuff you've been carrying. And Jesus says, you know what? It's a season that applies to everybody. The sun shines on the righteous and the evil. You know the scriptures, there's many of them. There's a season for everybody, including me. Point at yourself and say, including me. Including you. There are no exceptions. If you're making your, yourself an exception, it's because you're doing it. Yeah, come on. You're, you're, and goodness knows there's enough people in churches like that. Self-exclusion. Self-segregation. Self-segregation. You do it to yourself. And don't do it with God. Don't do it. Let Him in this Easter. Amen? Yeah, Let Him in this Easter. Let Him in. Jesus, it's a season and that season is open for me. Open for you. Secondly... It's a prophecy that I guarantee you because it's a prophecy inside me. Um, I, I would say this though, and I say it with all due respect. Sandra was saying I give words. Yes, I do. But Sandra, let me tell you, I, I, I'm not impressed with a lot of Pentecostal circles. You give a word, you can give a prophetic word to many people. And, 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 and the amount of effort or, or work that they put into that is next to nothing. But Paul said to Timothy, you make sure that you wage a good war with the prophetic words. You had words. Everyone in this room probably, because you're church folk, you have had words. And then you, you pray over it one day and let it go. Uh, 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 uh. Don't let the sun go down. God promised me victory, great victory. You have had words. Wage a good war with those words. It's a prophecy, but it needs work. And this supernatural increase, it's a prophecy. It's a prophetic word for you. Amen. For these days to enter. But it's going to take your work. It's going to take your participation. Right? We've got work to do. You've got work to do. And it may have to do, you know, all, all kinds of prophetic actions. And it's something I'm not used to. Columbia, they do a lot of actions. And that's good for me to, to pick up some actions. Prophetic actions. I do some. I have a property business I was sharing with the guys. When, 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 I, when I see a property, everyone has been a prophetic word. Every one of the apartments I own has been a prophetic word. If I don't get a word, I don't do it. I haven't got time for it. I don't want to waste my time. And I've had people you know, call me and say, you, you, look at this deal. Look at this. And you know what? It looks great. Do you know the problem? I haven't heard from God. Because it might look great today. <laughs> you know, next week it might not look great. So you need to hear from, you need to be hearing from God. 
But wh- when I get something, when I've got something, I, 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 I take the keys of my own house and I run. I run, I keep fit. And when I'm running, I'll hold the keys up in the air. Just my prophetic action, that's what I do. I look a bit like Superman. You know? I just run, to, I don't care what I look like. I don't care what I look like. You know, I just run through there like this. Yeah? I got the t-shirt. No, I'm only joking. I run through the park, run through the park. And in my mind, that's the keys. I'm already there. I'm already there. Already got it. Already got it. All right? Just a small prophetic action, but hey, it works for me. Some of you are not willing to do some of these actions. The the Bible's full of them. Full of them. Prophetic actions. Go and wash in the pool. Go and do this. Go and do that. And what did they get? A miracle. Supernatural. But it required something from them. You know, people are afraid of looking stupid. Isn't that true? We don't want to look daft. Noah looked stupid when he was building a boat in a desert. Right? Peter looked stupid when he's stepping out of a boat to, to walk on water. You look stupid. David looked stupid with five stones and no armor going against, you know, an army in Goliath. He looked stupid. Moses looked stupid with a stick against Pharaoh's army. This guy's crazy. What is wrong with him? Jesus looked stupid with a crown of thorns pressed onto his head and nailed to a cross. And they would have said, who is this joker? He says he's got power. Look at this. But you know what? Noah survived the flood. David killed the Goliath. Peter was the first man to walk on water. And Jesus today does not have a crown of thorns. Jesus today and forever is the King of Glory. Right? So don't be afraid about looking silly or stupid for a moment. There, believe me, folks, give me your attention. There, you are paying a very high price for not doing prophetic actions. You don't believe me? Ask Moses. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's one of the biggest prices in Scripture. Imagine 40 years, like Gordon Brown wanted to be Prime Minister, right? All those years waiting and working for that position, that thing of entering this promised land. All those years, and then a prophetic action. He doesn't want to do it because it looks stupid. You see, God's no respecter of persons, right? So you know what, Moses? You will not enter. Wow. So tell me, if Moses, Moses, the meekest man in all the earth, Moses, who, who tolerated those people, if Moses doesn't get blessed in the promised land, what's going to happen to me? I've got no chance. No chance. But our culture, but, you know, Pentecostals, I'm talking about us. We don't like to look silly. Now, we also, we're not crazy, right? I don't mean crazy. The word in, the, in that way, There's some cra- there, there are some crazy guys out there um, doing mad stuff. We're, praise God, VFC, we've never been that way, have we? It's always been very balanced. But at the same time, we, we need to become more practically prophetic people. And that will involve you doing some stuff maybe you haven't done before. So I advise you to exercise wisdom and get cover, but do press into the prophetic. Amen. It's a prophecy. Point two. Number three. Oh, this is so not me, this, this point. Um, the bread that you've cast upon the waters in your life is coming back. Right? I, 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 I work in countries that I won't name with families. <clears throat> and I, I really don't like parents who have children to... And, the, you know, the biggest thing in their, in their agenda is that the children will look after them when they're old. No problem with looking after them. But I've seen some enormous control. It's almost like the whole life... I mean, I could give you some examples that I've just disgusted with. You, you had a child, give the child life. Give the child their life. Of course, respect their parents. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I mean, there's some terribly abusive things with this. 
uh, around the world. However, that's what I mean by this point was very strongly prophetic to me over the last few days. Your, your children are going to be a blessing to you. Your children will be a blessing to you. Did you hear me? Amen. Your children will be a blessing to you. My, myself and Roy here, we travel all over the world. We travel constantly. We sit in economy, a bit like this, Roy. Right? We, we sit in economy seats for like six hours and ten hours at a time. And our friend Jerry David, while well, he's sleeping in some bed in first class. <laughs> yeah, he is. He is. Jerry flies all over the world, business class and first class. Yeah, I hate him. <laughs> Do you know why? Because years ago, Jerry had a child. And he raised the boy well. And that child became one of the top guys in United Airlines and his son gives him a little green card and that green card just opens every door praise the Lord so you know the moral of the story <laughs> get your child to work for an airline right amen but it just came to me that in in London where we are man alive you look at the children I mean I, oof, look at those kids isn't it bad at the moment some of the stuff that's happening and you can look at your children and think well you know where's this going to end but I believe God God said to me to tell you your children will be a blessing to you Amen. come back to you and defeat and break as you look you know negative faith's a bad thing your kids can pick it up from you when you don't believe in them don't believe in them believe in them take this today take this word and look with eyes of faith to them and believe that they will be a blessing to you and to your home. Number four, it's all good. Isaiah 29, the meek shall also increase their joy in the Lord and the poor shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. What I mean by this is when God does something, it's all good, right? He's a good God. God is good all the time, all the time. Now, how many of you are either in business or would like to be in business or, you know, have a sideline in a business. How many people here have some sort of interest in business? Okay, very good, very good. Those of you who didn't put your hand up that want to be in business, you should have put your hand up, okay? Come on, amen. amen. Have, have impact on our society. Do you know what? This scripture, it's all good. You need to be good in the business world. Yes. Not bad, not corrupt. And, and, and many Christians have two lives, isn't it? I've got my Sunday life, but then pastor, you don't understand. Pastor, 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 you know, you, yeah, no, you, uh, yeah, it's a good job. You don't work for the, I wouldn't work for them. If you have to do what you do, I wouldn't do it. So I wouldn't do it. So you've compromised then. There's something seriously wrong there. Amen. So do, do, don't compartmentalize your life. And you do not need to be like them, do you? In the business world, they're cutthroat. In the business world, they're, they do dodgy dealings. I know one pastor. This is a true story. I know one pastor, right? A building for sale. Church building for sale. So two pastors turn up. And they meet before the agent gets there. So they're outside. They look at the building. And one pastor says the amount of money he has. Okay? They're both friends of mine. And the other pastor says the amount of money he has. You see? And they say, okay, you will and well, you're going for it. All the best to you and all the best to me. Let's see who God blesses. And before the, the agent arrived, they shook hands and they said, do you know what? Why don't we make an agreement that whatever is agreed today, you and I will stick with it. As brothers, will we do that? So they stood there and they said, Lord, whatever agreement is reached today, we will agree with that. The agent comes. They set the price, one of the guys achieves it and the other one doesn't. So they all shake hands and they go home. Now the pastor who got the building, like five days go by and he rings the agent and the agent says, oh, the building's gone. He said, but, 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 but I said, no, the other pastor got more money and he's vastly out. Didn't he call? No, he's got far more than you. And he rang us back and he has got the deal. 
And you know, the pastor went back to him and said, What did you do? You, we, we shook hands. And you know what his answer was? It's business. That was his answer. It's business. Good business or bad business? Very bad business. Very bad business. You need to remember that God is good. All the time. Don't let anybody, don't let anybody make you compartmentalize your life. And don't let anybody excuse it. I'll say it again. Don't let anybody make you compartmentalize your life. And don't let anybody give you a mindset of excusing it. Yeah, amen. Very quiet. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's a hot spot right there, guys. I can feel it. Be careful. Be careful. It's not worth it. So don't sell yourself short. Amen. God will surpass anything. So don't be cutthroat. Don't be like the world. You don't need to be. It's all good. Number five. There ain't no trouble whenever God does it. There's no harm in it. There's no bad in it. There's, you see, for me, there's good prosperity and bad prosperity. Eyes forward, please. Give me your attention a moment. And I've witnessed this many, many times. What, for, for, for example, God will bless one Christian with a nice car. And the, the, the guy can think he's a king. It, it does something to your mind. Isn't that true? Suddenly, ha ha. You know, like the queen. They're off. You see, and something changes inside them. Or God bless you with a house. And suddenly, you're the king of the world. Guess what? They've all got cars. So how come it didn't affect them and it affected you? What's wrong with you? Something wrong with you and it's not good. So if God's going to bless... See, there's good prosperity. Everybody say good prosperity. Good prosperity. And there's bad prosperity. Say bad prosperity. bad prosperity. You don't want that. Good prosperity makes you humble. Good prosperity, you, 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 you will thank God for what he's done. You will praise God and it will bring you closer to him. Yeah. Bad prosperity, it'll get me, it's going to make you proud. And you're going to end up further away from God. Amen. Very, very true. So you analyze yourself with God when he adds to, to us. It shouldn't bring trouble with it. Shouldn't. And be very careful of that. Amen. Amen. God will prosper us, but he'll do it his way and he'll do it well and good. Number six, it's a supernatural yield. I'll read that scripture. The Lord shall give you that which is good, and the land shall release its yield in due course. Many of you will have some sort of investment, whether it's investment in relationships or children or families. As I say, I've got a property business, and one of the things over the years I've often been pushed to do is to sell too soon. Right? Right? Financial pressure will come on here or something will happen there. And suddenly I find myself under pressure. Have you been there? I, I, I'm being pushed to do something I don't want to do. I don't want to do this. See what this scripture says? That's not going to happen to you. That's what it says. Your fruit, your harvest will come in the right time. Can you claim that? Come on. Claim that. I will make my investments and I will not have to yield them before they're ready. Hallelujah. Amen. God, do it for us. Do it to, for us and do it in godliness. In Jesus' name. Number seven. And I love this. This promise of supernatural increase. We're going to look at it for two days. So stay, stay on the ball. Stay sharp. Empty your heart. Empty your spirit from, of everything but God. Just let him in this weekend. Number seven. It's to be shared with us as a family. Oh, praise the Lord. I pr you know, guys, we moved to a new apartment and outside our back window, there were many homeless people, you know, many homeless people. And Timothy was with us the other day. You can see them out there. Such a sad sight. These guys come in with blankets and, you know, and there are many al alone. And they're looking in the hedges and they go into the hedge and there they sleep in there. And then the next day, up they go. Oh, and they get their stuff. Alone. Desolate. Obviously no family. Victory family. 
center. London, family, center. You got a family. You got a family. It's a great family. I thank God for LFC. You guys are brilliant. Absolutely, speechlessly brilliant is what you are. You're excellent. Excellent, excellent congregation of love and care. And I thank God for it. Don't take it for granted. See all this supernatural stuff and all this. It's for us as a family. And I don't want you to get the idea that you somehow prosper and it's all, it's all for me. <laughs> it's all me. No, it was never that way, was it? It was never that way. It's for the kingdom. It's the church. And I want you to keep that, I want you to keep that perspective. He says here, ver- uh, number seven. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries. Anybody here from Zimbabwe? Okay. Sri Lanka? Nepal? Ghana? Nigeria? Oh, hey, hey, hey. Okay, okay, calm down. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Do you know what? Do you know what? I'm from, I'm from Ireland. I'm from Ireland. So many years ago, I was displaced. I was moved. I moved into Cardiff. I moved up to Glasgow. Moved many different places. And in those places, I was disassociated with my natural family, like you. Isn't God good? So God says here, see when you get displaced, I'm going to provide for you, Timothy. I'm going to provide for you good stuff. You're going to have friends around you. You're going to have a family. And for me, you know, as I look at, at increase, and I believe there's, a, there's a, an avalanche about to fall for those who want it and are capable of not being twisted by it. There's a, a mountain of good prosperity in relationships and life and business and finance and anything, ministry. As long as it doesn't destroy you, eh? And I want to keep family central, family focus, us as a group, us as a unit, us as God's children, God's household, central in my mind so I don't drift off and become selfish, right? Concluding tonight, in Genesis chapter 18, verse 21, look at this, I'll read this at the bottom of your notes. I myself, that's what, this is God talking, I will go down now and see what has happened altogether and, and the outcry against me and come. I love this scripture. Eyes forward, just, I'm almost done, but this is important. Do you know what I love about this scripture? This is Genesis, there's problems going on, and God says, God says, I'm going to go down and have a look myself. Now, you answer me, is God omnipresent or not? Yes. Right. So, what does that mean then? If you're already there, then how can you go down? I'll tell you what it means. It means that there's certain situations in people's lives that God himself gets involved. That's what this means. Never forget, it's just stuck in my head, Pastor Stephen's brother, when he was here about a year and a half ago. An excellent message on a Wednesday night. He preached about some of the African tribes back home where he'd gone to villages where there was, st- you know, there's still the king sits on a throne in the village and the tribal kings and all that. But he gave a great example how the, the king would be sitting eating his McDonald's or whatever it is. You know, it's 2019, right? So he's, he's sitting there and he's just completely oblivious. But the, the, the commoners, like us, have an opportunity to come and plead to the king, but they're not allowed near. near. So they're like quite a ways away. And these guys will come in and say, Oh, king. You are the most resplendent king in all of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And they would shout, but the king's just not interested. But what Stephen's, Joe's his name, what Joe said was, do you know what? Every now and again, someone comes and the king stops eating his burger. And he, it's whatever they bring. And it's the way they say it that the king says, hang on a minute. Bring that bring that person. I myself want to get involved in this. Bring them to me. You need to get the attention of God, correct? 
you need to get your personal attention of God in your life. Do you want that? So that he says, I myself, I myself, I'm going to deal with your case. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put your name there. I'm finishing with Psalm 102, verse 13. You will arise and have mercy on Zion for the time of her favor has come. Yes, the set time has come. Let me invite the worship team back, please. I believe this is a set time. This is a, a very significant time in world history. I have no idea how many years we've got left, but I want to use my time well and, and make myself available. Let me close here, guys. Please stand with me one moment. Stay with me. We're almost done. Come on up, guys. Jesus. Jesus. Just stay focused. One moment. We're going to let you go. I want you to consider the increase that you have experienced. And if you're like me, I can make a count of my increase by and large. I did this and I received that. I did that and I received this. I did this and that happened. And this weekend, I want to thank God for that. But I, in my life, want to make room for something much, much more. Like the widow, I want you to come to my house and make such an impact that it changes the rest of my life. Supernatural intervention of my God. Lord, you want to do the things you've always done. Spectacular things. And tonight, each of us, just thank God for the natural. One moment. Thank him for everything natural, for every return. It's important, very important. Thank you for everything, God. We are grateful. We're grateful for our churches, grateful for our families, grateful for the clothes on our back. But we see in Scripture, you are supernatural intervention. Can you lift your hands with me? One moment. And Lord, tonight we're making room. This weekend we're making room for you to come and do your good, good work. We make room. Father, I pray that we would be candidates for good prosperity, not bad. That in our workplaces we would be good, not bad. In our homes and our families, Christ would be enthroned. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Breathe in us tonight, Lord. All glory to you, Father. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. And we step aside to make room for you. We bring ourselves away with the one we love. Jesus who saved us.